Well, this is Eastergate. It's uh, nearly 140 years old. It's a beautiful old building, Flintstone on the outside. And it was ideal when there were about 30 children here. But now it's 110. Life gets very complicated. Because the modern education that we are very interested in needs that children have to move about. They need space. Uh, they need space to do their science experiments. They need space to do their maths. And because of this, it's the cry to find somewhere to do it. One of them. Just a moment, uh, Robert. Just try this first. Of making a little square, just writing down the number of things in the square. If you go into our cloakroom in the morning, you'll find class having French. Well, this is fine. They can all settle down. They're a small group, about 16. And then the infants will all come in. They've been doing painting or something, finger painting, and they've got to get round to the basins and wash their hands. So all the French has to stop while they go and wash their hands and then file out again. Here on then, look, hold that either side. Drop it carefully on. And tap all over to get the paint onto your paint. You like that, do you? Now Peter, get off those. They're from here. That's it, peel it back. No, that's not bad, is it? This is good, that's a lovely one. Did you do one with demolish in it? We're very keen on doing drama, free drama. Before we can do this, we have to move every desk and every table before we can start. Every time you want to do art and get the easels out, we have to move the desks again and put out the easels. In fact, staff and I really are champion furniture movers. 30th of May, 1878. In this room, we have about 40 children who operate. And every time we have lunch, the desks have to be moved and the tables have to be put outside. It's all right in the summer because we can have three tables outside. But in the winter, when it rains, we have to try and get all the children in here. It's squash. We put our art and our pictures on the wall. And we put them up in the evening. It takes a long time. And we come in the morning. And because they're so damp, they've all floated down. So we climb up and we put them up again. And this sort of thing goes on all the time. This is a story, a true story, about an idea. The idea of just how a school for these children should be built. A new school for Eastergate. The local education authority wanted to transfer the modern teaching methods of Eastergate to a modern school. At the same time, the county architect was studying new forms of building. This is the story of how these new ideas came together. It started some time ago although the first the children knew of it was when Mr. Patterson, from the County Architects Department, came to talk to their headmistress, Mrs. Brisland, and stayed to look at their drawings. They weren't to know that he'd been doing a certain amount of drawing himself, but in a rather more technical way, with a computer visual display unit. And this is the first thing that's different about the new primary school for Eastergate, the computer that helped to design it. Because this system did in a few days what could have taken months. It has the cost of materials and construction in its memory. Feed it a design and it tells you the cost. But a computer is just a tool, one way of applying science to architecture. There's more to the story of Eastergate School than a computer. It's the story of a concept. The concept of an integrated design. 
There are two aspects of integrated design. One of them is the integration of the client builder and the other is the integration of the design of the building. In this case, we had a, a, great, a great opportunity. Mrs. Brisland's a super person, super person to work with, although we had our difficulties and we had our disagreements, some of which have never been resolved. She is a tremendous person to work with. We then also invited the Electricity Council and Newcastle University Building Science Section to join us in the design of this building. And so we worked as an integrated team. This is far more like the origins of man, where Stone Age man was not only his own client, but he was his own builder and his own designer. And so he knew what he wanted, and if he didn't get what he wanted, he only had himself to blame, and he corrected it the next time. So from this sense, we had a sense of integration. The other aspect is from the building point of view. Originally, primitive man was standing out in the open, getting cold, wet, and miserable. He moves into a cave, which provides on a large part of his environment high insulation, and the hole in, at the front, he provided a heat curtain with a fire in order to balance the situation. Gradually, he developed in various ways from this, but unfortunately, as time went on, many of those basic principles got lost, and Nice ideas, such as large areas of glass, uh, tended to confuse the issue because these large areas of glass were producing high glare, heavy heat losses, and the object of the exercise tended to get lost. So what we were trying to do was to bring back this problem into the old simple ways where we had a highly insulated building. Um, we only had the amount of light that we actually needed and the air was drawn in and thrown out of the middle. There was no complicated artificial ventilation systems. And so, from this point of view, we, had, we tried to have this integrated design of the building plus the integrated team design. Well, when I had the chance of this new school, it was really a wonderful opportunity. Because we weren't going to be handed a building and they weren't going to say, look, here's your school, uh, work it. They came to us and said, well, let's work together on this. Uh, let's meet and let's discuss it and we will try and give you what you want. So the architect came and with his staff and they spent the whole day in the school. They even had lunch on one of these little chairs, which was rather funny because Mr. Patterson's a very big man. Mm, I think the children were so terribly clever and intelligent and um, adult that it was quite, I found it quite putting off because um, I had to think very carefully about all the answers. It was no use trying to fob them off with any answer that came up. And uh, they spent the day there going all the way round, and then the meeting started. And we had endless meetings, endless discussion. It seemed to go on forever. And, uh, of course, we didn't always agree. Uh, we had a one, uh, an exceptionally uh, difficult period when we really came almost to blows. Um, and this was largely because neither of us could get one at the other. Um, she was trying to phone me and couldn't get through and I couldn't get hold of her and gradually we became very frustrated and, and we, in the end we had to go off to a pub and have a drink together to make it up and get on again. But <coughs> we had a wonderful time. But although it was very exhausting, it was very exciting because we were really planning our own school. We felt from the beginning that the children had to be involved in this because it's not a building, it's their school, it's where they're going to be. And uh, we're very proud of the fact that since they started building, a record has been kept. Every day, some children were up on the site. Uh, the contractors and the children became partners in this integrated design as well. Well, the first time I went down, which was the fourth day they started, um, <coughs> nobody was there, so I think they had a holiday. The first time I went down there, um, there was a bulldozer there, and it was digging out um, foundations. And one time I went, this man gave us some stuff and he said you can make a ball out of it. And so we did this and he gave us some primroses as well to give to our teacher. But in the new school, yeah, the windows would be, be, well, nearly down to the ground and you'd be able to see everything. Um, one of the men said that his friend was Georgie Best's brother. I didn't believe him and he was only telling a fib. I must just read a poem that one of them wrote right at the beginning. 
You see, I think they thought that it was all going to go up in five minutes. And we were all geared up and waiting for the beginning of this new school. We couldn't wait to get down there, so we rushed down the first week expecting to see, you know, everything busy and everybody happy, everybody working. And in actual fact, um, there was nothing at all. And this is what Sarah read. Our new school. It is peaceful. One yellow bulldozer sleeping in the sunshine. Birds singing, children talking, sun shining, wind blowing, leaves falling. No one working. Where are the workmen? Perhaps they're tired. Perhaps they're sleeping. Perhaps they're at the Wilkes head. It seemed to me that a lot of our problems stemmed from these large glass areas which um, if you inst install an air conditioning system, because of the enormous amount of heat loss, you couldn't afford to throw away, away the heated air that you created. And therefore, then you, you started to wash it and clean it. And then the equipment gradually developed and got bigger and bigger. And then the whole thing became expensive and you went back to the opening windows. But if we could increase the insulation of the building and reduce the window area, then we could find a simple solution to the whole problem. And so in Eastergate, we have a situation where the window area has been greatly reduced and we suck out the air in the, in the middle from the roof area and only have four main inlet points which have got electric storage heaters in them. The next time I went down, it was built and part of the roof was on and they were just putting on these big slabs for insulation, I think they said it was. Then the second time we went down, the electric people were there and putting in some plugs. And then there's the cooking. I like cooking. Looking forward to that electric cooker. I think it's got um, about seven plates on it. Well, when you go straight in, you look straight at the window. And they're big windows, oblong. At the moment, it looks like one great big room with lots of windows in. And um, it was a wonderful opportunity to uh, think out what we did, to think of the things and say, well, what are our priorities? What do we need? And we thought about our priorities and we decided, first of all, we needed space. Lots and lots and lots of space. So we said, yes, well, let's have all of it. So it all went into one big, large area. Nothing wasted on corridors, nothing wasted on little pokey rooms. One big space. We needed a flexible system and one which allowed speedy construction to provide the small amount of heat we wanted. And so we used electric storage heaters which just clipped in like pieces of furniture. The whole scheme gives us the 2% daylight factor which the Department of Education and Science requires. And although the windows represent less than a fifth of the wall area, we have a much softer light and far less variation than we have with large windows because the sprays on the windows reduce the glare considerably. I think the children will like it. And then I said very firmly, a library, the best library that ever was, because I think books are the basis of all education. And I wanted a library that would invite people in, that would say, come on, use me. And so we planned an open library with blocks raised about nine inches off the ground with a beautiful comfortable rug in the middle, books easily displayed where children will want to sit and read. And you know children like to lie down when they read. They don't really like to sit up in a chair and read. They like to wriggle on the floor or do something like that. So they can do it in our library and the infants can come up and join. It's open to everybody. It's there and it's bang in the middle of the school. And then we thought, workshop. Children love to make and love to do. So let's have our workshop where everyone can get at it. Let's have facilities for working in wood, working in metal, and working in every sort of medium. Let's have a kiln to do our pottery. Let's have a cooker for the boys and the girls. We thought the mothers would probably like to come in and have a hand in this too. And let's make the workshop accessible to everybody and instead of dividing your equipment all over the place, it's all there so that everyone can use it. So we got our workshop 
and then we felt we must have a funny, it sounds a queer sort of room, we call it a noise quiet room, which is a contradiction in terms of course, but it isn't really, because there comes a time always when you want dead silence, and if you're reading poetry that uh, you want absolute atmosphere and feeling, you can shut the door and you can go in there and have this nice intimate feeling of being together. Uh, they can practice their violins in there, because that makes a bit of a noise, and it's a good thing to have it <laughs> a bit separated. And the recorders and all their musical instruments, and the films can go in there. There were no chairs and no tables in there. It's carpeted, of course, so they can sit on the floor. And it's raised in tears so they can sit comfortably and we can get a lot in. Scat, <laughs> cat, that's that. <laughs> that wears me up. <laughs> And then we thought about our infants. In fact, we were always thinking about our infants. We felt that they might feel a little bit lost in a great large area. So we put them nicely at the one end with three walls around them. So they would have their own part and yet still be part of the whole thing. And they've got a large messy area where they can do all the things they love to do uh, in peace. Well, I don't know about peace, I don't know if you associate peace with infants, but anyway, freedom. And, but they can still be part of the, the whole thing. <laughs> the lunches, the dinners, what are we going to do about that? Well, we decided that they must be right near, of course, to the kitchen. And we could team this up with a movement area because the uh, dinners are only needed at one time in the day, and the rest of the time we can use this for our movement and drama and PE. And it's at the far end of the school, and there is a curtain that will go across and divide this if we need it. Uh, we thought about the um, administration too. We didn't want an office that you shut the door on, on the other hand, it was vital to have somewhere where one could be a bit quiet. Uh, because in the old school, when the telephone went, I used to have to say, everybody, stop eating. Because there was a noise of the knives and forks. And when I had a long conversation, of course, it was terrible for the children who were dying to get on with their Yorkshire pot and roast beef and had to wait till I finished. So we made the telephone uh, and the office area in the entrance part, tucked well away, but still part of it. The parents also, I think, are, are extremely excited. I went to a parent-teachers association meeting, which uh, Mrs. Brisland organized. And uh, these, all these, these parents were sitting on these minute little chairs with these little tables. And it was supposed to be just a farewell party. Um, in actual fact, there was, the wine was flowing in bucketful and um, there was lots of goodies and it was a super evening altogether and the parents were marvellous and all of these were coming up and asking about the, about the new schools and they, the new school and they heard that it was a different design and wanted to know why and they thought it was marvellous and the very excitement that it had engendered and the participation of the parents and Mrs. Brisland and everybody in the design of the school was really quite exciting and I don't think that this would have been achieved in the normal circumstances. And that's the story of Eastergate Church of England Primary School. A story that started with an idea, a concept. The concept of an integrated design. Planned in careful detail with an ingeniously devised computer application, with the advice of the authorities' education committee, who agreed to support the building of a school of such advanced design, and with a team that turned the design into a reality. The architects and education officers of West Sussex, the Electricity Council, the Department of Building Science at Newcastle, and the headmistress and her staff. Not a fanciful idea, a dream of what a school in the clouds could one day be, but a practical one, built to meet the requirements of the Department of Education and Science, and for the same cost as a conventional building. A school built in a comparatively short time, which will be fairly cheap to maintain. A school for the children of Eastergate. Well, the thing I like best about it is the room it's got. You know, the old one is very small and they you know, all get all cramped up. But this one's, you know, gigantic. I, I like it a lot because 
But I didn't, I didn't like the old school all that much, especially having dinner. But I didn't mind the dinners, but all the crampness. And in the summer, it was so cramped that some of us, you know, we had dinner outside. I like it quite much, really. I like the thing I le like, uh, like it about the best because the windows are more shape, modern shape than the old ones. In the workroom, I like it. And it's ever so nice in there because you can make anything. I like it very much because I like the big windows because the others were so high that you had a job to get up to see anything. Well, mostly I like the toilets because the old ones were all smelly tin barrels and things and you wouldn't dress so nice. I like the lights. They shine. I like the lights, but I don't like the skylights because they put me off a bit. Oh, I like the enamelling in the workshop. And I like making all kinds of things. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to miss this building very much. So much has happened here. We've done so many things. We've been very happy here. And of course we're going to miss it. On the other hand, the future is ours. And in the new school, we think there'll be tremendous opportunities to enlarge on the kind of work we've been trying to do. Of course, it'll be strange on the first day. I should think we'll almost feel like lodgers. But children adapt so quickly that I think once they start doing things in it, they will very quickly make it their own. Mm -hmm. 